Okay, so um, today I'm preaching on Colossians 3.16. Um, that was the verse I was given, and we'll get there shortly, but I just want to show the context of the chapter in Colossians chapter 3. So if you want to turn to Colossians 3, we'll start in verse 1. Um, but the title of this sermon is Putting on the New Man. So in Colossians 3 verse 1, it says, If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, and not on things on the earth. So that's an instruction that we see through all the scriptures. You know, and I have preached before about Abraham and Moses seeking those things which are above. And all the prophets before us were all seeking those things. They were seeking that heavenly Jerusalem um, and all those uh, spiritual people. Um, but it's important to understand, and the reason why it's in the New Testament, and specifically in, in verse 3 of Colossians 3, while well, it says, For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. So our life, that's our old life. That old man, he's dead. You know, he was crucified with the Lord when he believed on him. Your old flesh was crucified. So that guy's dead, you know, and Christ is our life. What that means is we're born again through him. That new creature which makes us sons of God, you know, that's why Christ is our life. And that makes us sons of God because we're born of God. And we'll appear with him in glory when the Lord returns after the tribulation. So there in verse 5 as well, Colossians 3, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the, warm, the, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. And the children of disobedience, that's those who have not believed on the gospel. They're, they're the ones who have not obeyed the gospel. You know, they've disobeyed the will of the Father. Um, and the will of the Father is to believe on the Son. You don't have to turn there, but in John 6.40 it says, And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So that's what it means to obey the gospel, is to see the Son and believe in him. And so we're not to walk like or partake of the things of this world, and those, especially those things, those sins that are in Colossians 3.5. We're to walk in the new man according to righteousness. So we have to put on that new man. In verse 7 of Colossians 3, it says, In the which ye also walked some time when we lived in them. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. So now we're dead to sin, and that old man is crucified with Christ. He's considered dead. But that doesn't mean that he's not there. You know, that man is still there. We still have that duality, the old man and the new man, who coexist until, the, until that time where Christ either redeems our body when he comes or we pass away in this flesh. We still have that old flesh, which is why we're commanded not to walk after these things. And this is what Paul wrote about himself. If you want to turn to Romans chapter 7, verse 19, Paul says this about himself. That's Romans seven nineteen. It says, For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if, now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. You know, he's talking about the old man. He says, I find then a law that would, when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, the new man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. So Paul's here saying that there's a daily battle with his flesh. That, you know, when he does what's right, the old man's there fighting against him. When he does what's wrong, the new man's there fighting against him. And there's a constant battle that we have to deal with. You know, and we're no better than Paul. We all have that old man. We all have that new man. And they're both fighting daily. So we can still do those works of the flesh that are written there in, in Colossians 5. That's Colossians 3 verse 5. And in Galatians 5.19, it goes through as well what the works of the old carnal man are. It says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And again, we know the old man's not going to inherit the kingdom of God. It's the new man that inherits the kingdom of God. 
So again, this is not teaching work salvation. This is teaching that we, we still can do these things in the flesh and we need to put that aside. And it's a more comprehensive list there in Galatians. Um, but it's just important to understand what they are so we can judge ourselves on how we're, how we're doing. You know, how are you walking in the new man or the old man? Depending on what, you're, what you see here in the flesh, you know, you can see whether I'm walking after the old man or the new man. And we are commanded to walk in the spirit and not after the flesh. So what does that look like? In Galatians 5.22 it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another and envying one another. So, you know, they're the works of the old man which we can walk after those ways, but the works of the new man are these things. You know, if we live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, you'll be full of these things. And we can still walk after the ways of the old man if we, if we don't put on the new man. So, and that's what it means. So in Colossians 3, 9, Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. So again, Pastor Kevin last Wednesday preached a great sermon on the mind of Christ. And that's what it means. You know, we're in the image of the Father. We have the same Spirit of God and are born a child of God, that new man, that new creature. But it's not automatic. You don't automatically walk in the Spirit. It's something we actually have to do and we're instructed to do to put on that new man. And Paul spoke of that war, that if you're saved and walking in righteousness, you know that there's a battle every single day in, in, amongst your members between the flesh and the Spirit. In verse 12 of Colossians 3, it says, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which you also called in one body, and be ye thankful. So that's the result of walking in the new man. You'll have mercy and kindness and humility. You'll have forgiveness and long-suffering towards others. You'll have that mind of Christ. You can, and you can see the contrast between the old man and the new man. The old man is full of all manner of wickedness, and the new man is full of all manner of righteousness. So again, judge yourselves on how you're walking, according to what you see yourself doing. So the next logical question then is if we're commanded to put on the new man, how do we do that? So that's, that brings us to verse 16, which is the, the topic of this sermon. It says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So we're commanded to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. I'll read to you from Psalms 47, verse 6. It says, Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. So again, praise the Lord. Like this is one of the ways that we let the word of God dwell in us richly. And that's why we sing the hymns. Because there is such good doctrine in a lot of these hymns that when you sing them giving praise to God, you'll be filled with the Spirit. In Galatians 5.26, it says, Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another and envying one another. So another way is by provoking one another. That's edifying one another with the psalms and hymns and spiritual songs sharpening one another with doctrines. And as, you know, as Pastor Kevin preached about that mind of Christ, we see in Ephesians 5.21, submitting yourselves to one another, you know, in the fear of God and having humility. That's a mark of walking in the new man. In Ephesians 5 verse 18, it says, And be not drunk with wine where is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things under God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So letting the word of Christ dwell in you richly and being filled with the Holy Ghost, these are equated between Ephesians 5 and Colossians 3. So how do you put on the new man? You've got to read you know, by reading the word of God and letting it dwell richly in you. Read the scriptures, memorize the scriptures, meditate on your scriptures, and make it a part of your day. Not just a few minutes of your day, but your day should actually revolve around the word of God. So if you're at work, just have a little pocket Bible or something, you know, just so you can pull it out and just meditate on a, on a verse. Uh, memorize small passages so you can do that as well. But just as you go about your day, just be thinking on doctrines, thinking about God, praising God in your heart. And this is how you put on the new man and make sure you stay in the new man throughout the day. But an important part of that, you know, while we can think about the great promises of God, but to also thank him, like thanking God is a big part of this. You know, we see that throughout all these, all these verses I've read to you before is about praising God and thanking him, giving thanks to the Lord is a big part of walking in the new man. So throughout your day, just in your heart, just be thanking God all the time with the meditations of your heart. So we saw another part in Ephesians that was brought up in Colossians 3.16. It says, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So again, that's why we sing the songs and that's why we read the psalms, because they give praise to God. Um, James 5.13 says, is any, of, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. And that's how you should start your day. Before you go to work, before you even leave your bed, then you should be giving praise to God and be praying to him. Um, and thank the Lord. Sing in your heart to the Lord and start your day in the new man. You know, so before you even get out of bed, Psalm 63.5 says, my, my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips, when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. So again, David, he meditated all day and all night on the Lord. So when you wake up in the morning, before you even get out of bed, meditate on the Lord and his word and give him praise. And if you memorize some of the hymns, you can just sing them as well to yourself throughout the day. And that'll also help to, to keep your doctrine pure, to establish your doctrine, and just help to shore up what you believe. I'll read to you from uh, 1 Chronicles 16, 8. It says, Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them that rejoice seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. So again, we want to bring to remembrance the great things God's done for us, all those promises, everything he's done for us. And even the things, the gifts he's given to us in this world, just to be thankful for those things throughout the day. So as I conclude here, um, in both Ephesians 5 and Colossians 13, it concludes with that same instruction to be filled with the Spirit. Colossians 3.17 says, And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So just be thankful, you know, all the day be thankful to the Lord. And these are things you can do in your heart while you work or whatever you're doing, you're driving to and from work. You can do these things. You don't need anything special. Just do this in your heart. You know, and just sing those songs to yourself and just be thankful for all these things. And I, I can tell you, it'll brighten your day. If you're having a bad day, just pull out the hymn book and just sing a couple hymns. Like, that'll brighten you right up. You know, even go to the Psalms and see how much David loved the Lord. Like, just see the great things he did for them. That'll brighten your day. So I'll just conclude with Galatians 5.16. It says, This I say then, walk ye in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So that's what's important for us. Let's pray.